Welcome to this edition of The Community Producers. I'm your host, Chris Jones. The Community Producers features stories and segments produced by volunteers in and around Southern Alberta. In this first segment, the University of Lethbridge shows us their progress on destination project building. The excitement around the science and academic building at the University of Lethbridge is growing. PCL is nearing 90% construction completion and the building has been nominated for the prestigious World Architecture Awards in November. In the meantime, interior finishes are progressing quickly toward the finish line. Drywall is 95% complete and final coat of paint is being applied as we speak. Flooring and masonry are also close to completion. I'm Ed Bruin. I'm part of the team that's preparing the facilities department to manage this building. We'll be facilitating the transition between active construction, commissioning and moving staff and faculty into the building. Over the next seven months, all of the destination project team will be fully occupied with building commissioning. We'll be making sure finishes in each of the more than 700 rooms are completed well, while we check things like lighting, outlets and window coverings. That also means there won't be any more scheduled weekly tours until the UofL receives the keys in January. Early next year, we'll be overseeing testing of the heating, cooling and ventilation systems to make sure they're functioning properly. After that, we'll procure and move furniture in and begin to set up network and classroom infrastructure. In essence, early 2019 marks the end of PCL's construction phase and the beginning of our transition into this incredible facility. We're thrilled that this project is still on time and on budget and we're less than a year away from showing this building to the rest of campus and the Southern Alberta community. Five new exhibits are available for public viewing at CASA, downtown Lethbridge. Curator Darcy Logan hosts the next episode of Art Galleries at CASA. I'm Darcy Logan. I'm the Curator and Gallery Services Manager here at CASA, and I'm excited to be presenting six new exhibitions taking place around the building. In the main gallery, we have the exhibition Mapping the Body, with guest curators Brenda Brandley and Jorge Sandoval. And we had an idea that we wanted it to talk about the body and the interaction of clothing with it and the environment and um, make people think. And so we created it as we went. We had a very clear idea of what we wanted to do. And then we got the students involved and we spent a day having some fun with it. The main idea of the whole exhibition, which has been a three-year venture, is just to uh, go beyond our technical skills as costume designers, set designers, or fashion designers, and to uh, like explore in a more artistic way like how we see the body. In the Passage Gallery, The Adventures of Red Thunderbird Woman by Kylie Finday is a way for her through performance, costuming, and photography to explore her sense of place and Cree identity and I think it's a, an interesting and engaging exhibition for the viewers to take in. Collections and Curiosities by Hallie Lilburn feature her interesting approach to um, collage, sculpture, texture, and paint. Moody Blues by the Lethbridge Artist Club is a group exhibition of their members featuring 32 plus works, which will be rotating over the course of the next two months. Uh, it's a, a great opportunity for the public to, uh, to view and understand and just see the breadth and diversity of work that's done in our community, especially by this organization. CASA is open seven days a week and is free for the public to come and view. The exhibitions will be on until the end of December. And for any information or to find out about more programming we do here, classes and uh, our educational components to our programming, please visit our website or just come down and uh, get the CASA guide. Thank you. Lethbridge College alumni are a special group of people making waves across the world. Here are some of their stories. The education that I've had from Lethbridge College has enabled me to make my dreams a reality. With the knowledge that I've learned over the years, I can build anything. But we're a custom metal fabricator in Tabor, Alberta. I work for Blue Earth Renewables. We are a owner and operator for different utility facilities. When I arrived at the top of the first turbine that I ever climbed, it was 
phenomenal. It was a breathtaking experience. I still get that thrill every single time I climb. I took business administration, so that gave me a lot of real world practical skills that I could use and put towards creating the business plan for Tranquility Float Center. The float tank environment creates a very stress-free environment and promotes deep relaxation. The best part about owning my own business is the freedom that it gives me. So I work at Arches, which is a harm reduction agency in the city of Lethbridge. Um, I'm the cultural program coordinator and so I created a program called Idamoch Gunusen, which is everyone comes together. I kind of got really interested in that, in traditional ways of healing. So I was like, well, we need to do something different and help people on their healing journey, whatever that means to them. I work at 94.1 CJOC and I host The Morning Show. I graduated from Lethbridge College in 2005 and I took the broadcast journalism program. I've got a passion for music, I love listening to it, and I love just going on the radio and talking and sharing stories and connecting with the listeners. The guys you went to school with become your best friends. The vast majority of my casual people that I've brought on have actually been journeymen from Lethbridge College. We like to hire students, so I find Lethbridge College alumni are very you know, hardworking, very dedicated and passionate people. Lethbridge College also gave me the ability to problem solve, which was very effective going into my early stages of my career where everything was brand new and exciting. I think a lot of it from child and youth care really teaches you about that therapeutic relationship and rapport building and if I didn't have that, there's no way I'd be where I'm at today. I realized that there's a lot of different broadcast programs in Western Canada. But when we started going to work at radio stations and you started finding out that other people came from other programs, you found out how much the college taught you. I see the Lethbridge College as something that has helped me gain experience and the expertise that I needed to open this. Uh, having graduated six years ago, I am happy and extremely proud to say that I have surpassed my own career goals that I've set for myself. So I'm six years after my diploma and I'm standing in my very own business here, Tranquility Float Center. This is exactly where I'm, I'm meant to be. If we can impact one person, then that's, that's success. I mean, I've been in radio now for 13 years and I don't think I'd still be in radio and I don't think I would have had the success I've had in radio if not for my time at Lethbridge College. Almost 40,000 Lethbridge College alumni worldwide are leading and transforming their industries and communities. Share your story with us at lethbridgecollege.ca slash alumni. Are you a cat or dog person? Either way, the Lethbridge Animal Shelter is hoping to provide some forever homes. I'm Officer Skylar Plourd with Lethbridge Animal Services. This is Pet Talk on Community Producers. In this month's edition, we're going to visit three cats that are adoptable from the animal shelter. We're also going to talk about pet safety in the cold weather. This little lady is Churro. Churro was found in May near the Henderson Lake area. She wasn't claimed and she's now available for adoption. Churro is about two years old. She's very playful and very curious. She has been spayed, vaccinated and microchipped and is looking for her loving forever home. This sweet girl is Angel. She was found as a stray on the north side in March of 2018. She loves to lounge and take naps in cozy places, and she's very adventurous. Angel has been spayed, vaccinated, and microchipped, and she is now looking for a loving forever home. This is Moby. Moby was found as a stray in August and turned into animal services. She has not been claimed and is ready for adoption. This sweet girl is super adventurous and playful and has a lot of energy. Moby has been spayed, vaccinated and microchipped, and she is ready for a loving forever home. If you're interested in any of the cats featured today or the pets available for adoption from the shelter, stop by and visit us anytime. You can also check out their profiles on our Facebook page at Lethbridge Animal Services. And of course, you can share the photos and stories of our adoptable pets on your social media accounts using the hashtag opt to adopt yql as the winter rolls through southern alberta we just want to remind pet owners to be responsible and keep their animals safe from the cold weather 
If your pets are going to be outside, ensure they have access to adequate shelter and their food and water hasn't become frozen. When you're taking your dogs out for a walk, ensure they stay away from antifreeze and road salt. Don't allow your cats to wander as they may become lost in the snow and become injured due to the weather. Vehicles are not only dangerous for pets in the summer, but in the winter as well. It only takes a few minutes for a vehicle to cool down below freezing temperatures, and this can also be very dangerous to your pets. Never leave your pets unattended in a vehicle. Up next, the Lethbridge Public School District provides us with an update on their newest playground at Lakeview Elementary School. Don Ronnie, Lakeview Elementary. And I'm Melanie McMurray from Lakeview Elementary. This project started uh, four and a half years ago. I think it's closer to five, but we're saying four and a half. And it started because the playground that we had was too small, it was too old, and we had 500 kids and it was built for 300 kids. So when something broke, we couldn't replace it and it didn't have the right safety precautions that we know we needed for 2018. So we needed a new playground. We have baked, bought, sold, eaten, we've run, we've, you name it, the school family has done it and they've spent hours and We've had kids spend their pennies, we've done read-a-thons, spell-a-thons. Our Superhero Fun Run be be has become our new annual event that has been a huge community annual event and it's a huge contributor to how this school has raised the funds. We've had grants from Alberta government, from the City of Lethbridge, Alberta Recycling, lots of private corporate donations have supported us but four and a half years means it was an expensive playground so it took lots of people. I'm fortunate to be in the position of just joining a school and having a beautiful new playground and I know that uh, I've heard the conversations of the group of parents and the teachers and Melanie and Chris for me um, making it an inclusive and accessible playground and specifically choosing parts of the playground that all children can play at, that all Albertans will have access to and it's just one of the things that makes it just so special for it's a huge deal and today is a really emotional day that's why I'm carrying a box of Kleenex we've been crying in the office when we opened the door and the kindergartners came in and played we were crying and it's it's a big deal when a community can do something this big and when kids get to play it's it's worth the time and we need this in our communities Spaghetti. Ice cream. It's cold. I like cold. I'm a cold guy. Uh, poutine. I like it a lot. Steak. Uh, burgers. Gotta go with ribs. Ooh. Uh, probably orange juice. Oh, great pop. It's funny you ask, actually. I'm actually promoting my uh, sponsor here, Evian. Uh, natural spring water. Beer. Who doesn't love beer? Chocolate milk. Uh, I got a little Pepsi. <laughs> Ooh. Team Canada. Russia. 
Uh, is there any Ghost Riders? Uh, the New Jersey Devils. The Flames. Why? Because I'm from Calgary. Pittsburgh Penguins. What's that? Uh, just uh, growing up, I always liked Crosby. And, uh... Ooh. Jackson Hole. Because they got uh, good skiing down there. Russia. Nope. Because the girls are tens or ones, and I could tell them apart easy. Fort McMurray. I like the bad weather. Probably the lake. Boating. Mm, Arizona. I have family there. Uh, I don't know. I haven't really gone anywhere. I'd like to go to Vegas. Uh, the ice. Because it's just an amazing surface. Not many people get to play on ice. The girls. <laughs> um, making new friends, hanging out with the boys. Just being around the, the guys. Uh, probably being with the boys. Yeah. Uh, probably the, uh, the group of guys around you, for sure. Yeah, team sport. Hard work beats talent when uh, talent isn't in the game. It's a dog eat dog world, be the bigger dog. Sleep at night. Hungry dogs run faster. Uh, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. Uh, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. <laughs> <laughs> The Lethbridge City Council meeting held on November 13th had plenty for council to discuss. Uh, the last meeting was uh, was good. <laughs> there was there was uh, there was nothing too too wild and wacky and uh, controversial. I would say it was. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> Try to remember what day was that. <laughs> First, a presentation was made regarding urban hens in Lethbridge. When I was first doing, uh, running for council and there was, the, the chicken question came up and I, I found it, you know, really comical. I think, really, are we going to be talking about chickens? Hey, you know, I, and of course, because I'm immature and uh, I always do my Bugs Bunny chicken hawk impersonation, you know. Chicken hawk? I'm a chicken hawk. But anyway, that's beside the point. <laughs> so now I, now I must become mature, but you know, when I first heard about it, I thought there's, there's really, it's really silly to have chickens in the backyard in a city. If you want chickens, you should be out on a farm. But then uh, we had the presentation a short time ago by a gal who, who brought everything forward to give her dissertation on why, why it means a lot to her to have the opportunity to raise chickens. Now, the thing, the thing that impressed me was she did so much research on it where other places in, in Alberta have projects for urban hens. And uh, the fact that there is a lot of, uh, it, it wasn't just willy-nilly, go, go get yourself 100 hens, put them in the backyard, and everything's great. So there, there will be education. You need to have proper coop sizes, uh, learn all about chickens. And plus there'll be a maximum number of licenses if a pilot project was to go ahead to, uh, to have so that it's, it doesn't go rampant. And, and you really need to have the responsible people who, de, who do want to have chickens in their backyard. And it's an educational thing. People can uh, create the, their own uh, urban environment uh, where they can uh, you know, provide some kind of food source, not that they're, uh, that's gonna be everything that they can have, but it is an educational component. There was also a presentation on the Lethbridge Chamber's Downtown Ambassador Program. Chamber is, uh, is on board with the Ambassador Program. We've heard from uh, Police Chief Davis, who has talked uh, many times, I've seen this presentation many times, on how this Ambassador Watch Program works in Winnipeg and how highly successful it is. And uh, I just, uh, I'm really impressed with that aspect of it, especially given the fact that we have right here, you know, the Lethbridge College that has a law enforcement program where you have a resource of people 
that you can say, you know, here's an opportunity for you to help with the downtown force and, uh, you know, maybe maybe it will determine if that's the career that you want to go to. So, uh, in, you know, increased presence downtown has been a, a huge part of what the public is wanting. So I, I think the, you know, and, and again, it's all about uh, budget deliberations that'll be coming up and uh, what kind of budget they will have and how that will impact what the police does with their, their uh, envelope of money that they will eventually get and where they're going to spend it. But I think the Ambassador Watch program, the number of people downtown, it just creates that perception that this is a safe place. During the third week of November, Council will enter budget deliberations. I believe it's 96 uh, initiatives that are coming forward so we're going to go for uh, at least five days for eight hours a day talking about each of these uh, initiatives what what is important and uh, what is not important and of course with uh, I'm uh, the chair of the uh, open and effective go uh, government and we went out and had a number of forums where we asked people what do you want what do you like what do you don't like what's good what's bad and so that will that will go into our um, you know deliberations as well what people really wanted and what they didn't want that's important of course we're looking for a zero percent increase over the next four years so that is a challenge you know with over in, in close to 100 initiatives this amount of money this amount of money wants to be had so it's going to be uh, it's going to be daunting I uh, you know I'm at the same time I'm kind of looking forward to what the process is all about I like to solve problems I like challenges we are facing world food shortage and we need to double crop production by 2050 This program is very ambitious, and I like this challenge. The Potato Research Program is a result of research collaboration agreement between the University of Lethbridge and Alberta's potato industry, represented by the potato growers of Alberta, Lamp Weston, uh, McCain Foods Canada, and Cavendish Farms Corporation to establish a dedicated research program initiative in potato science at the University of Lethbridge. It allows industry to directly engage with the University of Lethbridge and create a program that is both beneficial for the university and beneficial for the industry because it's homegrown. It's practical research done here in Southern Alberta. It's researching problems that we as growers in Southern Alberta have and it allows us to have a hands-on program right in our own backyard. First of all, when I'm in the field, I always have this feeling because I'm excited to be in the field working with farmers and talking to them. They are great people. We have very healthy potato industry, very educated, and it's a pleasure to work with them. My name is Allison Davey, and I'm a third generation potato farmer from Tabor, Alberta. Uh, our farm is North Paddock Farms. Uh, we grow just over 2,000 acres total of all irrigated crops, and of that, about 500 is potatoes. Working with the university has been beneficial to myself as a grower because they're providing me with research that's relevant to Southern Alberta and is relevant to my potato crop and the diseases and pests that we face. Besides producing a program, one of the big pictures from the grower's perspective was the ability to produce students, future farmers, future people that go out into the industry to work for the processors. We wanted to be able to provide an opportunity for them to study and work at home and have an education that pertained to the industry that we're involved in. I chose the University of Lethbridge as my place of study because there was a large investment in industry and also within research. It's the first potato program of its kind across Canada, and I thought it'd be a great opportunity to be a part of. Definitely when I was a student, I had a mentor who inspired me, one or more mentors. And the same I'm trying to be to my students. I want to inspire them. Curiosity, curiosity and facing these challenges like globe security to improve our human society, to do something beneficial to humankind to do something useful.
My name is Clara LeBon. I'm a grade 9 student at LCI, and my project is about growing plants using the ocean water. So I created a system of evaporation that uses the, the seawater to feed the plants. I was watching TV once and I saw this article about um, ocean greenhouse, underwater greenhouse, and I decided that it was a really good idea because um, with global warming, it's the water, the clean water is going to be missing and we will want to use the water that's left to, to drink it and we will still need fresh water to feed the plants. So how are we going to do this? Well, the best answer was with the ocean water. So that's how the idea of my project come, came to me. Hello, I'm Jonathan Smith and I'm from Chinook High School. I built a home automation system using the Arduino platform that takes uh, various actions depending on sensor readings. And from there it will determine what to do. And the idea is to make it open source eventually so that anyone can recreate it and get accessible home automation for a way cheaper cost. Well, the original idea came from uh, when I wanted to participate in the regional science fair. I read many analysts that were worried about uh, various home circumstances, like water flooding and temperature and humidity levels. So I thought that it would be interesting to build a device that would fix all these problems for them automatically. Before I put it open source, I want to develop it to a stage where it can, uh, I guess you could say, probably compete in the future, but that might take a long time. And from there, it uh, should be able to make it so that many people can get it for free, is the idea. I'm Chase Stasek, I'm in grade 12 at uh, Manuel Christian Secondary School and my project is something I call the Awareness Project or TAP where every month I would make a video about some sort of mental illness or mental health concern and present it in front of my entire school. I researched and edited and drew and narrated videos just addressing concerns like depression or anxiety because I saw that there was very much a lack of representation in the schools and by my fellow students. I'm actually looking and trying to partner with someone or start things next year and spread out to more schools because mental health is something that really is underrepresented, but there is a huge need for it with the growing levels of anxiety and depression within students in our schools. That does it for another edition of the Community Producers. I'm your host, Chris Jones. Send your story ideas to shawtv.lethbridge at sjrb.ca. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.